Hey guys, so in this video I'm showing you how I drew this white horse using pastel pencils on pastel mat. For the pastel pencils that I used, I used a combination of Stabilo Carbothello pastel pencils, a couple Derwent pastel pencils, which aren't listed on my supplies there, and a couple of Faber-Castell Pitt pastel pencils. For the pastel mat, the color that I used is the anthracite color, which is a dark gray. And I chose that color because of the color of my horse. But you could really use um, any color of pastel mat if you wanted, and it would still end up looking good. So as I usually do with animals or drawing people, I like to start with the eye. I used various browns, grays, and blacks to put the coloring in my eye. And I saved the highlight for last. I usually use, um, I believe it was a very light gray and then a white on top of that for the highlight. You can see how I curved the highlight on the top of the eye to make the eye look more rounded. If you don't do that, your eye might look a little on the flat side. So for the, the coat of the horse, I am putting down a foundation layer of a dark gray and I'm modifying that with some of my cooler grays that I have in the Stabilo Carbothello line. To get the directionality of the fur, I'm using, I think it's a gray-white color that I used for the majority of this drawing. I don't usually try to use just one color for the hair throughout the drawing, but that actually ended up working out pretty well in this one. So throughout this drawing, the most important thing that I can tell you is to watch for the direction of the fur and the length of the strands of the fur. I'm paying quite a bit of attention to my reference photo and seeing how long I should make those strokes and in what direction I should make the strokes. And I'm mostly using the pastel pencils to blend. You can see me using my finger in a few places here and there and I have a little paper blending stump as well that I use for the small areas. But for the most part I'm using another pastel pencil to blend once I go on top with that one. But actually, for this horse, his fur was a little more on the coarse side. It wasn't super smooth like some other horses that I've drawn. So there wasn't a whole lot of blending in this one, even with the pastel pencils. And he did have a couple little spots here and there. So you can see me coming on top after I already have the strands of fur down. And I'm laying in some darker spotty colors. Now starting to work on his bridle here, I'm using a base of black and then coming on top with various grays, paying attention to where the highlights are on my reference photo. And I am exaggerating some of them here and there just to make it pop a little bit more. The bridle looks a little more complicated than it actually is to draw. Um, what I recommend is just breaking it down uh, one little piece at a time. And that'll help you not get overwhelmed by it. With pastel pencils, you can actually put in the darkest color first, which in this case is the black for the bridle, and then come on top with my lighter grays, and it actually shows up really well. If you're using, say, colored pencils for this kind of drawing, that wouldn't be the case. You'd have to preserve your light areas. But with pastel pencils, you can lay light over dark, or you can lay dark over light. They're really uh, very easy to work with. Now for this back area that I'm working on, on the back of his neck, um, it's a little softer looking for the fur, so I didn't put as much detail back there. And I rubbed out a little more with my fingers than I did in the other parts of his face. And again, you can see me using my little paper stump working on this part of the bridle. It helps a lot to get into those, those little places where if I tried to use my finger, I would just end up smearing everything everywhere. And 
and onto the ear. I recommend breaking this down into little sections so you don't get overwhelmed by it. The ear does look a little complicated to begin with when you're looking at the reference photo. So as usual, I'm starting out with my darkest colors and kind of blocking in so I give myself a little road map of where to put my fur. I like to put in the darkest areas first, so the blacks and the grays, and then a little bit of the lighter areas, and then come on top with my strokes for the direction of the fur. So somehow I missed the recording of the other ear, but it's basically the same principle. And coming on to the hair now, again the same principle for doing the rest of the fur on his face, starting out with my darker colors, so the dark gray and the black. The black I used for blocking in the shadowed areas. And then I'm using my lighter colors, which were various grays, in nice long strokes to show the direction of the hair. And it may take you some time to get it the way that you want it to look. The hair is, it looks like it should be easy, but a lot of times it, it's not. It takes a little bit of practice, so don't be too discouraged if it doesn't look the way you want it to right off the bat. Just keep working at it until it looks the way you want it to. And going on to the back of the horse here. I'm going to try and leave this area with less detail since it isn't the focal point of my drawing and it is kind of in the background. So I'm not going to put the big strands of fur that you can see on his face in this area. And I'm using my finger quite a bit to blend out here. And once again, I somehow hit my camera while I was working or starting or stopping the camera. So the camera is at a funny angle now, so I do apologize for that. I will notice that eventually and correct it. And continuing to work on the areas of fur using the same principles that I did before. I don't think I used any actual white for this drawing of a white horse. Um, I used mostly the gray white, which is one of the Stabilo Carbothello pencils. I don't recommend generally using white as like the main color of pretty much anything that you draw. Um, white things tend to not actually be white if you look at them really closely. So if you use just plain white, you'll end up with a drawing that looks a little flat. And putting in different colors for your base layer, like I do with the grays here, it's kind of a cooler gray that I'm using, will help prevent your drawing from looking as flat as it would if you didn't do that. So for the areas of his legs here that I'm working on, I'm very lightly running over the Payne's gray that I have underneath with my lighter gray. And I'm trying to give the fur kind of a mottled look, so I'm not trying to get the, the gray white to cover every little bit of the pastel mat. And that's pretty easy to do with this paper because you tend to need a few layers of pastel on this paper before it will actually blend smoothly. So I'm kind of using that to my advantage here. I don't want his fur to look like it's all one smooth color. And 
And as usual, you can see I leave the nose for last because I don't like drawing noses on anyone, be it people or animals. Right, starting on the nostrils now, you're, you'll see me using mostly the same colors that I've used throughout the drawing so far. And just paying close attention to my reference photo. Where are the darkest darks? Where are the lightest lights? And kind of look at everything as an abstract shape. Otherwise, I, I know I would get confused as to what goes where. Taking it one little bit at a time, I like to block in the under layers first and then come on top with the detail afterwards. And you know what? If you don't get it exactly perfect, that's okay. As long as, say, the nostrils are where they should be and the mouth is where it should be, the other little markings on his, his nose don't really matter. Unless you're doing like a commission portrait for someone, then chances are they're going to know what their specific animal looks like. But in this case, this was only for my own use, and it didn't really matter if I got, say, one of the little markings on his nose, not exactly where it should be. And here is the finished piece. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below and give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you happen to make anything similar, please tag me in it. I'd love to see what you're doing. All right, thanks. We'll see you next time.